And now I get to go back in time and benchmark that landing page and see, regardless of the campaign, did I start to push more what the search terms look like different and what were working better and what was working worse and all the other stuff. So yeah, we're going to get real deep into this and then overlay AI so we can do predictive indicators. Oh, it's going to be so powerful. So, uh, but FA, what we're going to be doing is removing these three products, not the first one, just removing these three products and making our own standard shopping campaigns um, for these three with the daily budgets that are whatever we spent on the monthly budget of those products divided by 30.4. So this would be, you know, 98.73 costs in the last 30 days. So 98.73. Let's well, call it 10 Gs, so 10,000 divided by 30.4. This campaign is going to have a $330 daily budget on Rosemary. If these metrics hold inside of Edge Mesh, then we get to push, we get to scale. As long as my conversion rate holds, my initiate checkout, my active card, my engage, as long as it's holding to these benchmarks, I'm going to be continually pushing because this is a snapshot in the future seven to 10 days of revenue, both inside in app and also on Amazon. I don't have to push, wait seven days, get the you know loss of attribution. Maybe they click brand, maybe they bought on Amazon, maybe they maybe they, maybe we ran an email, maybe they came back organically, maybe we didn't spend too much money. All that stuff goes away. But I can say if they're getting to the site and they're staying um, within these benchmarks metrics that they have for the last 30 days, I'll continue to push. Kind of cool, right? We get to use our actual benchmarked previous historical performance when this is good to say, will this hold or when we push, do we see a diminishing return in engaged users, active carts, initiate checkout, begin checkouts, or actually checkouts, conversion rate. Does the ARPU uh, average uh, revenue per user on initiate gross checkout and net checkout and actual checkout, does this stay the same? Because again, I don't care that's 0.36. I just don't want that to go down. <laughs> So this is where I can get a snapshot of future growth and scalability rather than, you know, what did we, or what could we attribute that week? Now it's great. This tool is 8K a month, but it is, it's super powerful. And we got to see, are they still new? Are they still unique? Do they still have product view rates that are high? Yes. It's standard shopping. Of course they will. It's it's, uh, it's literally the only possible scenario in here because it is. Um, can I go down a little bit? Or there we go. Just look at this top line here. As long as these metrics stay about the same, Your product view rate. Do they view a product? Yeah, we sent them to the page. Um, you can even see that there's ten percent bouncers because they didn't even view a product before it even fully loaded. They just left. Um, kind of cool stuff. Engage product view rate, percentage of product views by engaged users when they're engaged. It's it's very very good. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. Engage users with zero value carts. Yeah, there's people that are really looking at this built and you know going to multiple pages. This is so much fun. So Glenn, does that satiate your your want for edge mesh? Is there anything here that you want to see? No, no. I, well, I want to see the patterns that you recognize more and more, and then yeah. I want to play with it. <laughs> I know, right? Look at this A active cart total value. This is twenty six hundred versus twenty two versus fourteen versus a thousand. This one right here has got the highest, and that is from the audience that is mostly engaged. Hmm. So, because we use leading indicators, not attribution. Unless these people just start falling off at scale, then I know I hit a point of diminishing return on that channel. I've exceeded the available audience that Google can target, or at least I've exceeded the amount of demand from an inbound perspective. I can go right up to the point where I start to lose a dime and then stop. Are you, doing any, are you doing anything with the standard shopping campaigns with respect to you know, making sure that the search terms are relevant, doing any negatives, all that sort of stuff? No, it, it, it's already kind of there now, which yeah, is good. Okay. Um, yeah. The interesting thing, though, is this here. Watch this. Um, this product, the uh, Disney Collector's Bundle. You see how this Disney Collector's Bundle has a 
um, conversion rate of like 0.53, and it shows that I have you know 713 in conversion value. Um, shows like eight sales. We see how this starting to decline. Mm. This page here actually has been confirmed. We investigated it. Doesn't have anybody converting. So we saw this two weeks ago, and I was like, that can't be right. Google's showing showing a metric. And I was like, this is this doesn't make any sort of sense. Why would this thing show a decline in um well, let me just get the thread here going. Uh what's his name? Jacob, where is he? Uh Jacob. Uh dun, 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 dun. sorry, give me one moment. So I noticed this two weeks ago, I had a conversation with them this last week. And I was like, hey, before I make some expensive decisions, do you know why this is showing zero in compared to Google? And it's like, this one's like purple toning. Here, this is all the same thing. And then purple toning was like, no, we got a thousand bucks in in conversion value. Um, that's what he's like, same date range, from all cold traffic, blah, blah. And he goes, so Google shopping, check manually. Indeed, none of those clicks on the lander had a conversion. Um, He's like, he's like, man, there's definitely no conversions. How? And I was like, well, actually, we track every click for 90 days. Um, and he's like, well, that's convenient for them. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so we were like kind of comparing and contrasting results. Um, and when this one here, along with the uh, this one here, which is uh, set in heat list, this one, this last 30 days is showing none. So yes, these people are getting to the site and they are buying something. But you can even see now this last 30 days, this one's starting to fail. That that landing page isn't converting anybody. So what does this show us? Well, we see a leading indicator that's saying, hey, the last 30 days of traffic. Now imagine this in like the last four days of traffic where it's like last four days, no one's converted on this page. Google has you know returned users, warm traffic that it tries to attribute to those campaigns that are outside of what I'm filtering. And it says, yeah, no one's actually hitting this page. It's not, it's not doing anything. Now this last 30 days, that campaign's tanked 50%. I could have known that a month ago by saying, actually, no one going to this Disney bundle is buying the Disney bundle. They're buying other things, but not that. So shut that off. You know, I can get these leading indicators before it starts to tank. So it's kind of cool stuff. Hefe, what's cracking, yo? Can I have that screenshot? Which one? Sure. Thank you. You took a screenshot. You said these few products. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I just made a new one. It's these three products. There. Rosemary biotin, shampoo bar, rice water, protein bar, strength. Okay. It's going to be so cool. Now that I can break these out, if I start to scale, hold. Um, ah! One more question. Those yeah. are individual products. We also have like the categories. So when you descend by clicks, the number one product was Heatless Curler, but that's the number three ad group in terms of clicks. So when you descend clicks, but uh, in the ad groups, pillowcases has the most amount of clicks, mm -hmm. but it's, it's distributed amongst like 10 or 12 products. So to make sure like for Rosemary, do you want that product or do you want the whole Rosemary group? Nope, that product. Yeah. That's what I love about edge mesh is it's landing page specific. And I want ad spend to landing page specific. Um, and I want to see if I can push it and correlating search terms. So we'll take just those three products, put them in their own campaigns. We're not going to, we're, we're not going to care about if there's people that used to click on that one and go to another one. I want to see if I can isolate and scale. That's the, that's the point of it. Okay. And then I get to go back in time and benchmark that landing page and see regardless of the campaign, did I start to push more what the search terms look like different and what were working better and what was working worse and all the other stuff. So yeah, we're going to get real deep into this and then overlay AI so we can do predictive indicators. Oh, it's going to be so powerful. Hi, everyone. This is Regina and also Glenn from Solutions 8. Say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> We're going to walk through feed gen. Um, I have no idea what it is, but I think uh, Glenn's going to show us. And he has some serious success with it. So we're going to 